the legendary American actor Steve McQueen called the King of Cool was renowned for his gritty charm and anti-hero persona. He gained notoriety in the 1960s and 70s, captivating audiences with iconic roles in films such as Bullet and The Great Escape. McQueen's passion for fast cars and motorcycles was a reflection of his on-screen identity, further solidifying his place in popular culture. His impact is still felt today, influencing a new wave of performers and directors. With 1963's The Great Escape, Steve earned top billing, showing the world that he was a bona fide movie star, despite his career being heavily laden with controversies and a luxurious lifestyle. Steve's career peaked when he discovered his passion for racing and featured in some box office hits. On March 24, 1930, in Grove, Indiana, McQueen was born to a struggling single mother. He was frequently moved from home to home and attributes a number of his early years to his grandparents and Uncle Claude. Steve McQueen's early years were not pleasant. McQueen moved out of the boy's house at 16 in an attempt to see his mother again in New York, but the trip didn't last long. Following a string of odd jobs and additional legal troubles, McQueen enlisted in the USMC in 1952. Using his GI Bill payout, McQueen began performing in New York at theaters including HP Studio and Sanford Miser's Neighborhood Playhouse. His early acting training is what initially attracted him to the big screen. Fans of the old Hollywood will remember Steve McQueen as one of the film industry's most iconic personalities. Popularly called the King of Cool, Steve's fame grew far beyond Hollywood throughout his career. Steve's on-screen escapades led him to be the highest paid actor in the world in the mid-1970s and a passion for cars resulted in a successful career as a race car driver, including competing in the 12 Hours of Sabring, where he finished second behind the legendary Mario Andretti. During an interview, Steve said that his father passed away at the age of 50, his mother passed away at the age of 50, and he added that he too would pass away at the age of 50. In an interview, Steve McQueen's wife, Barbara, described how she fell in love with her husband, Steve, the moment she met him. She also talked about how she felt about his passing. Steve McQueen had three marriages, two of which terminated in divorce. In addition, he had two children who he adored. Briefly dated actress Gia Scala while the two were students at Stella Adler's acting school. He later married actress Nellie Adams, with whom he had two children, his daughter Terry and son Chad. The two divorced in 1972. The same year, he married actress Allie McGraw, who left her husband, producer Robert Evans, to be with McQueen. The two were married until they divorced in 1978. His final marriage was to Barbara Minty, whom he married in 1980, several months before his death. Marshall Terrell, one of the most respected writers, compiled a book that featured pictures from McQueen's life, including his time in Palm Springs. In addition, he discussed Steve McQueen's well-known films and his enduring attractiveness, which persisted even after his passing. In the 70s was a further extension of his success in the 60s. We saw him in great films such as Le Mans, The Getaway, The Towering Inferno, and An Enemy of the People. His final two films were released in 1980, Tom Horn and The Hunter. While Steve McQueen left us a significant body of work, we could have seen so much more. Sadly, 1980 was the year that Steve McQueen passed away. Even over 40 years since his passing, Steve is remembered as one of the best actors of his generation and an icon for leading men. So how did he die so young, at the age of only 50? Steve McQueen received this fatal diagnosis before his death. Steve McQueen was sadly infected with a horrific form of cancer known as mesothelioma. He was told it would make his life harder and that it could take his life sooner than expected. During his military experience, he was exposed to asbestos as a result of working at harbors and at shipyards. This later caused him serious health issues. It's this asbestos exposure that has caused many veterans to get mesothelioma. In fact, this particular form of cancer has been rather common among veterans. Steve McQueen got even more exposure to asbestos while working on his films. Many times he had to wear clothing that protected against flames, and these would garner asbestos. In 1978, two years before he died, Steve began having serious issues with his health. He would cough often and have difficulty breathing at times. He was told by doctors that his mesothelioma wasn't curable, but they tried to reduce its harm via chemotherapy. 
he also sought alternative treatment to help him treat his illness. While this helped prolong his life a little and also helped him have enough energy to work on more films, it was sadly clear that mesothelioma was taking over his life. Even though Steve was charming and charismatic, he also had pals who, despite their seeming lifetime friendship, were actually difficult to get along with. In The Great Escape, Garner played Flight Lieutenant Bob Henley opposite McQueen's Captain Virgil Heltz. In his 2011 memoir, Garner was quoted as saying that, like Marlon Brando, McQueen could be a pain in the ass on set. He went on to say, however, that unlike Brando, Steve wasn't an actor. Rather, he referred to him as merely a movie star and a, quote, poser who cultivated the image of a macho man. If that wasn't cutting enough, Garner continued to tear McQueen to shreds by saying that even though he had a distinct persona that he'd bring to every role and that everyone seemed to love, you could always see him acting. That's the kiss of death, Garner brutally declared. It wasn't only McQueen's talent or lack thereof that was an issue for Garner. James also felt as if McQueen's behavior on set was entirely unacceptable. Throughout his career, Steve would often cause disruptions, and during the filming of The Great Escape, he almost walked off while... James Garner was one of them. Garner said some really awful things about Steve in an interview. However, Steve expressed his skepticism about Garner having an affair with his wife. Although they both insisted they had been friends for life, it was obvious that they detested one also recounted how, at one point, Steve even became convinced that he was having an affair with his first wife. In his memoir, Garner said he didn't believe that McQueen was a bad guy, but he did find him to be quite insecure. The actor further noted how Steve's wife, Nellie, had told him at one point that her husband was always envious of tall, dark men and that he had been convinced she was having an affair with Garner. After detailing his conversation with Nellie, James wrote that he always thought of McQueen as a delinquent younger brother and that inversely, Steve viewed him as an older brother. But despite that bond, McQueen received a fair bit of criticism in Garner's scathing memoir. In case it wasn't already obvious, Garner never slept with McQueen's wife. That assertion was baseless and a prime example of what Garner had to routinely put up with while maintaining his friendship with Steve McQueen.